All right. This is going to be rough, but I need to try to do a reading right now. Oh, I'm just going out. Kink my neck pretty bad, I think. This happens every once in a while, probably like once a year, once every couple years. And my neck just it hurts. So I'm just going to do something simple since I'm just not in it right now. Maybe Bible readings. Let's go ahead and just do Nehemiah 11 through 13. Pause. And then I'll try to get into, I'll try to do three at a time. And I'll get into Esther 1 to 6. <sighs> Bible. Um, just make sure. Yeah, Nehemiah 11. All right. Now the princes of the people were living in Jerusalem, but the rest of the people cast lots to bring one of every ten. To live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the other nine stayed in the other cities. Moreover, the people blessed all the men who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. And these are the heads of the province who lived in Jerusalem. The rest of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the temple servants, and the sons of the servants of Solomon lived in the other cities of Judah, each one in his own possession in his city. Although also there lived in Jerusalem some of the people of Judah and of Benjamin. Of the people of Judah were Athiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Ahalalel, of the sons of Perez, and Maasiah, son of Baruch, son of Kohosa, son of Hoziah, son of Adiah, son of Joyarib, Joyarib, son of Zechariah, son of Hushon. All the sons of Perez who were dwelling in Jerusalem were 468 capable men. And these were the people of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joed, son of Pediah, son of Kaliah, son of Maasiah, son of Athiel, son of Jeshiah, and after him Gabai and Salai, 928. And Joel the son of Zikri was their overseer, and Judah the son of Hasanua was, was second in charge of the city. Of the priest Jediah, the son of Joyarib, Jachin, Sariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Merioth, son of Ahitub, a leader of the house of the true God. Brothers who did the work of the house, age 22, and Adiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pelaliah, son of Amzi, son of Zechariah, son of Pasher, son of Malchijah, and his brothers, heads of paternal houses, 242, and Amishai, Amishai, son of Ezrael, son of Azai, son of Mishalamah, son of Immer, and their brothers who were mighty, courageous men, 128. And their overseer was Zabdiel, a member of a prominent family. And the Levites, of the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashab, son of Azikram, Azrakam, son of 
Hashabiah, son of Buni, son of Shabbatai, and Josabad, of the heads of the Levites, who were in charge of the house, of the outside business, of the house of the true God, and Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zab Zabdi, son of Asaph, the conductor of the singing. who are in charge of the house business outside of the house of true God, Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zabdi, son of Asaph, the conductor of the singing, who led the praises during the prayer, and Bakbukiah, the second of his brothers, and Abda, son of Shemua, son of Galal, son of Jeduthun. All the Levites in the holy city were 284. And the gatekeepers were Akub, Talman, and their brothers, who kept guard in the gates 172. The rest of Israel, the priests and the Levites, were in all the other cities of, the, of Judah, each in his own inherited property. The temple servants were living in Ophel, and Ziha and Gishpa were in charge of the temple servants. The overseer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, There we go. Sorry, sorry, I keep pausing. I got itchies all over. Ouch. And the gatekeepers were Akub, Talman, and their brothers who kept guard in the gates 172. The rest of Israel, the priests and the Levites, were in all the other cities of Judah, each in his own inherited property. The temple servants were living in Ophel and Zihan Gishbah. Okay. The overseer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, the son of Banasim, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers. He was in charge of the work of the house of the true God, for there was a royal order in their behalf. Ah, uh, oh, shit. Sorry, I have a sharp pain in my foot. And there was a fixed provision for the singers as each day required. And Pethahiah, son of Meshezabel, of the sons of Zerah, son of Judah, uh, was the king's advisor for every matter of the people. Regarding the settlements with the fe their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba and its dependent towns in Dibon and its dependent towns in Dekabzio and its settlements in Jeshua, in Molada, in Bethpalet, in Hazarshual, in Beersheba, and its dependent towns, in Ziklag, in Mekona, and its dependent towns, in Enramon, in Zora, and in Jarmuth, in Zon Z uh, Zanoa, in Najulam, and their settlements, in Lachish, and its fields, and in Az Azaka, and its dependent towns. They settled from Beersheba clear to the valley of Hinnom. And the people of Benjamin were in Geba, Michmash, Aijah, Bethel, and its dependent towns, Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gitaim, Hadid, Zebuim, Nabalat, Lod, and Ono, the Valley of the Craftsmen. And some divisions of the Levites from Judah were assigned to Benjamin. Nehemiah 12. Oh, man, that hurt. These were the priests and the Levites who went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hatash, Se uh, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Edo, Ginnathoi, uh, Abijah, Mijamin, Maadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Jediah, Salu, Emma, Achiah, and Jediah. These are the heads of the priests and their brothers in the days of Jeshua. Oh, 
All right, the Levites were Jeshua, Benui, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who led the songs of thanksgiving with, the, with his brothers, and uh, Bakbukiah and Uni, their brothers, stood opposite them for guard duties. Jeshua became father to Joachim, and Joachim became father to Eliashib, and Eliashib to Joiada, and Joiada became father to Jonathan, and Jonathan became father to Jadua. In the days of Joachim, these were the priests, the heads of the paternal houses, for Sariah, Moriah, for Jeremiah, Hananiah, for, Ez for Ezra, uh. Meshulam, for Amariah, Jehohanan, for Malachi, Jonathan, for Shebaniah, Joseph, for Harim, Adna, for Marioth, Hakai, for Edo, Zechariah, for Ginnathon, Meshulam, for, Abi for Abijah, Zikri, for uh, Minamin, for Moadiah, Hiltai, for Bilga, for Bilga Shamua, for Shemaiah, Je Jehonathan, for Joyarib, Matanai, for Jediah, Uzi, for Salai, Kalai, for Amak, Eber, for Hilkiah, Hashabiah, for Jediah, Nathanel. <clears throat> the heads of the paternal house of the Levites in the days of Elisha, Joiada, Johanan, and Jadua were recorded, as were the priests, down to the kingship of Darius the Persian. The Levites, who were heads of the paternal houses, were recorded in the book of the history of the times, down to the days of Johan, the son of Elisha. The heads of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmio. And their brothers stood opposite them to offer praise and give thanks according to the instructions of David, the man of the true God, uh, guard group corresponding to guard group. Mataniah, Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Meshalam, Talman, and Akub were standing guards as gatekeepers, guarding the storerooms by the gates. These served in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josedach, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and Ezra, the priest, and copyist. At the inauguration of the walls of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites and brought them to Jerusalem from all the places they lived to celebrate the inauguration of rejoicing with songs of thanksgiving and with cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps. And the sons of the, the, shape, the singers gathered together from the district from all around Jerusalem from the settlements of, Metophophite, of the Metophophites, from Bethkalal, and from the fields of Geba, and Asmaveth, where the singers had built settlements for themselves all around Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites purified themselves all around Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites purified themselves, oh sorry, and they purified the people at the gates and the wall. Then I brought the princes of Judah up on top of the wall. Further, I appointed two large thanksgiving choirs and processions, and the one walked to the right on the wall toward the gate of the ash heaps, Isaiah and half the priests of Judah walked behind them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshalam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. With them were some of the sons of the priests of the trumpets, Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zachar, son of Asaph, and his brother Shemaiah, Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, my eye, um, Nathanael, Judah, and Hanani, with the musical instrument of David, the man of the true God, and Ezra, the copyist, went before them. At the fountain gate, they went straight ahead up the stairway of the city of David, by the ascent of the wall above the house of David, and on the water gate to the east. The other Thanksgiving choir walked in the opposite direction, and I followed it with half the people on the wall up over the tower of the ovens. And on the broad wall, and up over the gate of Ephraim, and on to the gate of the old city, 
and onto the fish gate, the tower of Henanel, the tower of Mea, and so on, or on the sheep gate, and they came to a halt at the gate of the guard. At length the two thanksgiving choirs stood before the house of the true God, so did I and the half and half of the deputy rulers with me, and the priests Eliakim, Maaseah, Minamin, Micaiah, Eliani, Zechariah, and Hananiah, with the trumpets, and Maaseah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzi, Jehohanan, Malkajan, Elam, and Ezer. And the singer sang loudly under the oversight of Israhiah. On the day that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, but the true God made them rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced, so that the rejoicing of Jerusalem could be heard far away. On that day men were appointed over the store storehouses for the contributions, the first fruits, and the tents. Into them were into them they were to gather from the fields of the cities and portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites. For there was rejoicing in Judah because of the priests and the Levites who were ministering. And they began to take care of the duties of their God and their obligation of purification. As did the straits, the singers and the gatekeepers accorded to the instructions of David and his son Solomon for long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there were directors for the singers uh, and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. And during the days of Zerubbabel the, and during the days of Nehemiah, all Israel gave portions to the singers and the gatekeepers according to the daily need. Uh, they also set aside their, their portion of the Levites, and the Levites set aside uh, to take the port or the portion for the descendants of Aaron. Okay, I gotta rest for a bit. I gotta lay down. All right. All right. I just got that napping a little bit, so let's see how that goes. But... All right, Nehemiah 13. That day, the book of Moses was read in the hearing of the people, and it was found written that no Ammonite or no Moabite should ne never enter should never enter the congregation of the true God. <sighs> and this not written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever enter the congregation of the true God, for they had not met the Israelites with bread and water, but instead they had hired Balaam against them to curse them. However, our God has changed the curse into a blessing. As soon as they heard the law, they began to separate from Israel all those of foreign descent. Before this, the priest in charge of the storeroom of the house of our God was Eliashib, a relative of Tobiah. He, made, he had made available for him a large storeroom, where previously they used to put the grain offering, the frankincense, and the utensils in the tent of the grain, the new wine, and the oil to which the Levites, the singers, and the gatekeepers are entitled along with the contribution of the priests. And during all this time I was not in Jerusalem, where I went to the king in the 32nd year, the king of, of King Artaxerxes, of Babylon. And sometimes later I asked the king for a leave of absence. And I came to Jerusalem and noticed the terrible thing that Eliashib had done in behalf of Tobiah, making a storeroom available for him in the courtyard of the house of the true God. That was very displeasing to me, so I threw all of Tobiah's household furniture out of the storeroom. After that, 
I gave orders and they cleansed the storerooms. And I put back there the utensils of the God of the true God, of the house of the true God, with the grain offering and the frankincense. I also found out that the portion of the Levites, that the portions of the Levites had not been given to them, that the Levites and the singers who had had the work, who did the work, had gone off, each to his own field. So I reprimanded the deputy rulers and said, why has the house of the true God been neglected? Then I gathered them together and assigned them back to their posts. And all Judah brought, up, brought, it the tent, brought in the tent of grain and new wine and the oil to the storerooms. Then I put Shelemiah the priests, Zadok the copyist, and Padiah the Levite in charge of the storerooms. And Hanan, the son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah, was their assistant. For these men were considered reliable. It was their responsibility to make the distribution of their brothers to their brothers. Do you remember me, O oh my God, concerning this? And do not wipe out my acts of loyal love that I have done for the house of my God and its services. In those days I saw people in Judah treading wine presses. <sighs> On the Sabbath bringing in heaps of grain and loading them on donkeys and bringing wine, grapes, figs, and every sort of load into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So I warned them against selling provisions on that day. So I warned them against selling provisions on that day. And the Tyrrhenians, the Tyrians, who lived in the city were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise selling them to the people of Judah and in Jerusalem on the Sabbath. So I reprimanded the nobles of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing that you are doing? Even profaning the Sabbath day. Was not this what your forefathers said, so that our God brought all this disaster on us and also on the city? Now you are adding to the burning anger against Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So as soon as the shadows began to fall on the gates of Jerusalem, for the Sabbath. I ordered that the, the doors be closed. I also said that they should not open them until after the Sabbath. And I stationed some of my own attendants at, at the gates so that no loads would be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the traders and the sellers of all kinds of merchandise spent the night outside Jerusalem once or twice. Then I warned them and said to them, Why are you spending the night in front of the wall? If you do it again, I will force, use force against you. From that, up, from that time on, they did not come on the Sabbath. And I told the Levites that they should regularly purify themselves and come... <laughs> and come and guard the gates to keep the Sabbath day holy. This also do remember to my credit, O oh my God, and show, my, show me pity according to your abundant loyal love. In those days I also saw Jews who had married Ashdodite, Ammonite, and Moabite women. Half of their sons were speaking Ashdodite and half spoke the language of the different peoples. But none of them knew how to speak the language of the Jews. So I reprimanded them and called down a curse on them and struck, struck some of the men and pulled out their hair and made them swear by God. You should not give your daughters to their sons and you should not accept any of their daughters for the sons of you for yourself. Was it not because of these that King Solomon of Israel sinned? Among the uh, many nations there was no king like him and he was loved by this God, so that God made him king over all Israel. But the foreign wives caused even him to sin. Is it not something unheard of for you to commit this great evil in acting unfaithfully against our God? 
by marrying foreign women? One of the sons of Joyada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, had become a son-in-law of Sanballat, the Horonite. So I drove him away from me. Do you remember them, O oh my God? Because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. And I purified them from every foreign defilement, and I assigned duties to the priests and to the Levites, each to his own service, and arranged for the supply of the wood at appointed times and for the first ripe fruits. Do remember me favorably, O oh my God. And admit the book of Nehemiah. Right. Book of Esther. I'm going to go through chapter 6. No. Esther 1. Now in the days of Ahasuerus, that is the Ahasuerus that ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia, in those days when King Ahasuerus was sitting on his royal throne in Shushan, the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he held a banquet for all his princes and his servants, the army of Persia and Media, the, no the nobles and the princes of the, the provinces were before him, and he showed them the wealth of his glorious kingdom. And the grandeur and the splendor of his magnificence for many days, 180 days, and when these days were completed, the king held a banquet for seven days for all the people present in Shushan, in the citadel, from the greatest to the least, in the courtyard of the garden of the king's palace. There were linen, fine cotton, and blue material held fast in ropes of fine fabric, purple wool and silver rings, uh, pillars of marble, and couches of gold and silver on a pavement of porphyry, marble, pearl and black marble. Wine was served in gold cups. Each cup was different from the other, and the, ro the royal wine was plentiful according to the means of the king. The drinking was according to the rule that no one was under compulsion, for the king had arranged with the officials of his palace that each should do as he pleased. Being Vashti, also held a banquet for the women at the royal house of King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the king's heart was in a cheerful mood because of the wine, he told Mehuman, Biztha, Harbana, Bidtha, Abadtha, Zethar, and Carcass, Carcass, the seven court officials were personally attend a personal attendance to King Ahasuerus. To bring before the queen, before the before the king queen, sorry, to bring before the king Queen Vashti. I don't know why I was thinking that was one word, king queen, <laughs> wearing the royal headdress to show the peoples and the princes her beauty, for she was very beautiful. But Queen Vashti kept refusing to come at the king's order, and that was conveyed through the court officials. At this, the king became very angry, and his rage flared up within him. The king then spoke to the wise men who had insight with regard to precedence, for in this way the king's matter came before all those versed in law and legal cases, and those closest to him were Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Meris, Mosina, and Minukin. Seven princes of Persia and Media, who had access to the king and who accompanied the highest positions in the kingdom. The king asked, according to law, what is to be done with Queen Vashti because she has not obeyed the order of King Ahasuerus conveyed through the court officials. To this, the Mukin said in the presence of the king and the princes, it is not against the king alone that Queen Vashti has done wrong but against all the princes and against all the peoples in all the provinces of King Hahasurius. For what the queen did will become known by all the wives, and they will despise their husbands and say, 
King Ahasuerus said to bring in Queen Vashti before him, but she has refused to come. This very day, the princesses of Persia and Medea, who know about what the queen did, will talk to all the princes of the king, resulting in much contempt and indignation. If it seems good to the king, let a royal decree be issued from him, and let it be written among the laws of Persia and Medea, which cannot be repealed. That Vashti may never again come in before King Ahasuerus, and let the king confer her royal position on a woman who is better than she is. And when the decree of the king is heard all, in all his vast realm, all the wives will honor their, give honor their, to their husbands from the greatest to the least. This proposal pleased the king and the princes, and the king did what Mamukin said. So he sent letters to all the royal princes, provinces, to each province in its own script, and to each people in its own language, for every husband to be master in his own house and to speak in the language of his own people. Esther 2. After these things, when the rage of King Ahasuerus Ahasuerus, I can't pronounce that, had subsided, he remembered what Vashti had done and what had been decided against her. Oh, 3048. Sorry. I'm uh, doing my dialysis right now, so I'm going to pause real quick. All right. As to two, after these things, when the rage of King Hasarius had subsided, he remembered what Vashti had done and what had been decided against her. Then the king's personal attendant said, A search should be made for young, beautiful virgins for the king, and let the king appoint commissioners in all the provinces of his realm to bring together all the beautiful young virgins to Shushan, the citadel, to the house of the women. Let them be put in the care of Haggai, the king's eunuch and guardian of the women, and let them be given beauty treatments. And the young woman, who is most pleasing to the king, will be queen instead of Vashti. The suggestion was pleasing to the king, and that is what he did. There was a certain Jewish man in Shushan, the citadel, whose name was Mordecai, son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjaminite who had been taken into exile from Jerusalem with the people who were deported to King Jeconiah of Judah, whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took into his exile. He was the guardian of Hadassah, that is Esther, the daughter of his father's brother, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was beautifully formed and attractive in appearance, and at the death of her father and her mother, Mordecai took her as his daughter, when the king's word and his law were proclaimed, and when many young women were brought together at Shushan, the citadel, under the care of Haggai, Esther was also taken to the king's house under the care of Haggai, the guardian of the women. Mm. Copy. Now the young woman was pleasing to him and won his favor, so he promptly arranged for her beauty treatments and her diet, and he assigned to her seven selected young women from the king's house. He also transferred her and her young attendants to the best place in the house of the women. Esther did not say anything about her people or her relatives, for Mordecai had instructed her not to tell anyone. Day after day, Mordecai would walk in front of, in front of the courtyard of the house of the women, to learn about Esther's welfare and about what was happening to her. <clears throat> Each young woman <clears throat> had her turn to go in to King Ahasuerus after completing the 12-month treatment that was prescribed for the women, for this was the way they had to fulfill their beauty treatment. Six months with oil of myrrh and six months with balsam oil and various ointments for beauty treatment. Then the young woman was ready to go into the king and whatever she asked for would be given her when she went from the house of the women to the king's house. 
And the second evening, she would go in, and in the morning, she would return to the second house of the women under the care of Shaashgaz, the king's unit, the guardian of the concubines. She would not go to the king unless the king had been especially, especially pleased with her and she was requested by me. And when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she did not request anything except what Haggai, or Haggai, the king's unit, uh, the guardian of the women, recommended. All the while, Esther was winning the favor of everyone who saw her. Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus at his royal house in the tenth month, that is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king came to love Esther more than all the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he put the, the royal headdress on her and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king held a great banquet for all his princes and his servants, the banquet of Esther. He then proclaimed an amnesty for the provinces, and he kept giving gifts according to the means of the king. Now when virgins were brought together a second time, Mordecai was sitting in the king's gate. Esther did not say anything about her relatives and her people. Just as Mordecai had instructed her, Esther continued to do what Mordecai said, just as when she was under his care. In those days, while Mordecai was sitting in the king's gate, Big Fan and Teresh, two court officials of the king, doorkeepers, got angry and plotted to do away with King Ahasuerus. But Mordecai learned about it and he immediately told Queen Esther. Esther then spoke to the king in Mordecai's name, so the matter was investigated and eventually confirmed, and both men were hanged on the stake. And this was all recorded in the book of the history of the times in the presence of the king. Esther 3. After this, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agatite, and exalted him by putting his servant, or putting his throne above all the other princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were in the king's gate would bow low and prostrate themselves to Haman, for this is what the king had commanded respecting him. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, let's see. Start over Esther 3. <clears throat> After this, King Hesarius promoted Haman, the son of Hamad Hamadatha the Agatite, and exalted him by putting his throne above all the other princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were, with the, were in the king's gate would bow low and prostrate themselves to Haman, for this is what the king had commanded respecting him. But Mordecai refused to bow low or to prostrate himself. And the king's servants who were in the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why are you ignoring the king's commandment? Day after day, they would ask him, but he would not listen to them. Then they told Haman <clears throat> to see whether Mordecai's conduct would be tolerated, for he had told them that he was a Jew. Now when Haman saw that Mordecai refused to bow low and prostrate himself to him, Haman became filled with rage, but he despised the thought of doing away with Mordecai alone, for they had told him about Mordecai's people. So Haman began seeking to annihilate all the Jews who were with, who were in the entire realm of Ahasuerus, all of Mordecai's people. In the first month, that is, the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is, the lot, before Haman, to determine the day and the month, and it fell on the twelfth month, that is, Adar. Haman then said to King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your realm. Those laws are different from those of all the other peoples, and they do not obey the king's laws, and it is not in the king's interest to let them be. If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed. I will pay 10,000 silver talents to the officials to put it in a royal, um, the royal treasury.
At that, the king removed the signet ring from his own hand and gave it to Haman, the son of <clears throat> Hamadatha the Agatite, who was the enemy of the Jews. The king said to Haman, the silver and the people are given to you. Do with them as you see fit. The king's secretaries were then called on the 13th day of the first month. They put in writing <clears throat> all of Haman's orders to the king's satraps, the governors who were over the provinces, and the princes of the different peoples to each province in its own script, and to each people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the king's signet ring. <clears throat> the letters were sent by means of couriers to all the king's provinces, giving the order to annihilate, to kill, and to destroy all the Jews, young and old alike, children and women on a single day, on the 13th day of the 12th month, that is, the month of Adar, and to seize their possessions. A copy of the document was to be issued as a law in every province and proclamated to all the peoples so that they would be prepared for that day. The couriers went out quickly by order of the king. The law was issued in Shushan, the citadel. The king and Haman then sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was in confusion. As to four, when Mordecai learned of everything that had been done, he ripped his garments apart and put sackcloth and, and ash, put on sackcloth and ashes. Then he went out into the middle of the city, crying out loudly and bitterly. He went only as far as the king's gate, for no one was to enter the king's gate wearing sackcloth. And in every province, Oh, here we go. And in every province <clears throat> where the king's word <clears throat> and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews, along with fasting and weeping and wailing. Many were lying down in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's female attendants and her eunuchs came in and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments for Mordecai to wear instead of sackcloth, but he refused them. At this, Esther summoned Hatha, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he appointed to serve her, and she ordered him to find out from Mordecai what this meant and what was happening. So Hatha went out to Mordecai in the public square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him about everything that had happened to him and the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasury for the Jews to be destroyed. He also gave him a copy of the written decree that had been issued in Shushan for their, their annihilation. He was to show it to Esther and explain it to her and instruct her to go into the king to beg for his favor and to plead directly with him in behalf of her people. Hathak came back and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Esther replied to Hathak with instructions to tell Mordecai, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces are aware that if any man or woman goes into the king's inner courtyard without being summoned, there is only one law that applies. He is to be put to death. He may live only if the king holds out to him the golden scepter. And I have not been summoned to the king now for 30 days. When Mordecai was told that Esther had, what Esther had said, he replied to Esther, Do not imagine that because you are in the king's household, you are any more likely to escape than all the other Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will come to the Jews from another source. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether it is for a time like this that you have attained to your royal status. Then Esther replied to Mordecai, Go and gather all the Jews who are found in Shushan and fast in my behalf. Do not eat or drink for three days, night and day. I, along with my female attendants, will also fast. 
I will go in, go into the king, which is against the law, and if I am to perish, I will perish. So Mordecai went his way and did all that Esther had instructed him to do. Okay, Esther 5. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courtyard of the king's house, opposite the king's house, while the king was sitting on his royal throne in the royal house, opposite the entrance. As soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, she gained his favor, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Esther then approached and touched the top of the scepter. The king asked her, What is the matter, Queen Esther? Queen Esther? What is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it will be granted to you. Esther replied, If it pleases the king, let the king alone, along with Haman, come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. So the king said to his men, Tell Haman to come quickly as Esther requests. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. During the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, What is your petition? It will be granted to you. What is your request? And even to the half of my kingdom, it will be done. Esther answered, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and to act on my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I will hold for them tomorrow. And tomorrow I will do justice, do, do as the king says. On that day, Haman went out joyful and with a cheerful heart. And when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and noticed that he did not rise and tremble in his presence, Haman was filled with rage against Mordecai. However, Haman restrained himself and went to his house. Then he sent Uh, for his friend and Zeresh's wife. Haman boasted about his glorious health, his many sons, and how the king had promoted him and exalted him over the princes and the servants of the king. Haman added, what is more, Queen Esther invited no one else but me to accompany the king to the banquet she prepared. I am also invited tomorrow to be with her and the king. But all of this fails to satisfy me as long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting in the king's gate. So Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends said to him, Have a stake put up, fifty cubits high, and in the morning tell the king that Mordecai should be hanged on it. Then go with the king to enjoy yourself at the banquet. This suggestion seemed good to Haman. So he had the stake put up. Esther 6. Right? Yeah. That night the king could not sleep. So he said to bring the book of the historical records of the times, and it was read to the king. There it was found written that Mordecai had reported concerning Bigthana and Teresh, two court officials of the king, doorkeepers who had plotted to do away with King Ahasuerus. The king asked, what honor and recognition has been given to Mordecai for this? To this, the king's personal attendant said, nothing has been done for him. Later, the king said, who is in the courtyard? Now Haman had come into the outer courtyard of the king's house to speak to the king about having Mordecai hanged on the stake that he had prepared for him. The king's attendant said to him, It is Haman, standing in the courtyard. So the king said, Have him come in. When Haman came in, the king said to him, What should be done for the men whom the king wishes to honor? Haman said in his heart, whom would the king wish to honor more than me? So Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king wishes to honor, let them bring royal attire that the king wears and a horse on which the king rides, with the royal headdress on its head. Then let the attire and the horse be put into the charge of one of the king's noble princes, and they should clothe the man whom the king wishes to honor 
and have him ride on the horse in the public square of the city. They should call out before him, this is what is done for the man whom the king wishes to honor. At once, the king said to Haman, quick, take the attire and the horse and do what you just said for Mordecai, the Jew, who is sitting in the king's gate. Do not leave out anything that you have said. So Haman took out or took the entire or sorry, took the attire and the horse and he clothed Mordecai and made him ride him ride in, ah, made him ride in the public square of the city and called out before him this is what is done for the man whom the king wishes to honor afterwards Mordecai returned to the king's gate but Haman hurried to his house mourning with his head covered when Haman related to his wife Zeresh and to all his friends everything that had happened to him his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai before whom you have started to fail is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him. You will surely fall before him. While they were still speaking with him, the king's court officials arrived and quickly took Haman to the banquet that Esther had made. And that's the end of A.D. 48.